talk about the conversation yesterday of since I can't fly anywhere, like I have to find places to hike and all that, that the weather has to be predictable. It said today there was supposed to be showers and the possibility of thunder showers. Wow, that was sure accurate, wasn't it, people? <laughs> it looks like today you guys sent me some uh, updates for that Mark Garneau stuff, okay? Kind of interesting. And I think uh, for the uh, mapping and stuff, but yeah, please keep me in touch, like whoever's trying that new firmware update, because again, I can't try it just because I can't fly it anywhere because of the uh, silly laws. So it'll be interesting to see uh, how it is for other people's Mavics. The only thing I've read so far is people that said they updated it, for some reason they didn't, they can't shoot in 4K anymore, whereas some people say, oh, I just reset it and it works. I guess that's just a negative of upgrading like, you know, new firmwares and stuff in general. There's usually like a ton of new bugs or uh, kinks that people have to work out. There's one interesting piece of news I read just because of all these things about like, you know, drones and lawmakers here where I think they're just closed-minded. Uh, there was actually something funny where like Microsoft, they sent people like um, for the press, these candy like um, filled lollipop type of things with scorpions in it because like one of their new consoles, they're dubbing it as the Scorpio or Scorpion. I was thinking, well, you could argue it's a really dumb um, marketing or PR strategy uh, due to the culture because people, you know, they obviously relate to things differently. It's just kind of surprising to me, like, how many people were saying as if they did it just for this, like, it's very unusual to have, like, a, say, a scorpion and something like that. Whereas if you look at it, like, in other countries, actually, that's kind of normal for some countries to eat things like bugs and all that. So you can even see, like, they even have stuff like this on sale. It just makes me think again, uh, a lot of people, they should try to experience different cultures or how people live like in other parts of the world too because it might actually be normal for them, you never know. Like in this case, it's not like that company invented this, like it's so unusual. That just reminds me why people should experience uh, different cultures and all that because what might be crazy and off the wall to you might actually just be super normal to like other people as well. So just like with the uh, drone laws and all that, like don't freak out about stuff you don't understand until you do your research into it in my opinion. And Bugs, you were saying these were salmon berries and they're edible? That's always why I like to ask, you learn new stuff all the time. Anyone else see this video about some uh, GoPro that was on a weather balloon and it caught like an airplane like really high up in the air? I was just watching that because the first thing that comes to my mind is holy cow! Like, like in relation to this drones and all that, how do you detect if that is a drone or whatever. I can't imagine someone going that fast and that speed can identify like, hey, that's a drone. How would you know, honestly, in that distance? It makes me wonder like in that case, whether or not stuff like that are being reported as like drones all the time in many ways. But at the same time, like uh, why isn't that weather balloon or whatever considered like equally extremely dangerous in many ways? And do I have any uh, fluent French speakers on my channel? I was reading uh, this piece of news. It was about a uh, airplane crash or collision to my knowledge somewhere in uh, Quebec. But from what I gather, it was something about um, a pilot school or something like that, like people that are training and they weren't responding to, I guess, radio tower um, communication, like, hey, don't fly here or something like that. And as a result, um, they eventually crashed. Again, I'll place a link below where uh, you guys can see the full video and all that. So if anyone wants to translate it for everyone else, uh, please do so because I think it's educational. But what really stuck out to me, because apparently from what I gather, uh, it said based on this article, I believe it said something about this kind of incident is actually, it happened more than once or whatever, like it's more frequent. So it made me wonder like in terms of safety and drones and interim laws and all that and air safety, Where's the urgency like for all the actions and stuff here that actually happens, especially if it's like frequent? Where's the call for, I need to put an interim order now on all these whatever, like student pilots because they're causing all these accidents. You can't tell me this is about safety, like for the drones and all that. Because you have like immediate problems like this, I would imagine this is what an interim order is for, like something of an urgent need because something actually did happen. You know, at this point, I don't understand how all the people who just use the what if, what if scenario arguments could still stand by that. Like based on what I see here, like this is not a what if, it actually does happen apparently. And I was even thinking too, in terms of the general public and being aware of stuff like this, like that, I didn't know stuff like this happens that frequently, like with airplane crashes. Like I could only imagine like someone else right now, like they probably would be the same. The only reason why I'm like, you know, reading stuff about this is because of these dumb interim drone laws and I became more aware now of how like many accidents there are with planes and all that. I mean again, have safeguards and all, but where's the interim orders to ban all pilots or whatever?
That's okay for noise for birds, but not a drone. <laughs> His feathers out. You know, it's kind of funny because Bob, your comment came up and said Emperor Garneau knows best and they started to get into a rumble right when they said that. And speaking of Garneau, uh, Mike, you just sent me something about here saying uh, you got a response from your MP about Mark Garneau's response for your request. And from what I gather, for the most part, again, it seems like it's a template response. Uh, I was comparing yours to uh, Dan, he showed me his up before. And for the most part, yeah, it seems like most of the stuff is the same thing, but um, the only difference is yours has the additional um, paragraph about the animals and all that. The heck, that doesn't sound like an animal to me. Does your, does your back hurt? No, 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 I just don't know. No, that explains that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've heard different uh, variations of this, you know, like just from Transport Canada's Twitters and all that. Um, since this is the official response, I guess you can say, um, let's just, you know, read this. It says, with regards to animals, the intent of the new rules is to avoid risk to animals that can be reasonably detected and avoided. This can be someone's pet, a herd of wild animals, livestock, or any animals that might be specifically protected under the laws. However, small wild animals such as squirrels, mice, skunks would be beyond reasonable because they are small and difficult to see. Recreational operators are asked to fly their UAVs at least 75 meters from animals or wildlife. To me, this is still uh, confusing as it's too general. And at the same time, it goes back to my point, if this is about like say safety, protecting animals, if a recreational person can't do it, then a commercial person can't do it either. That doesn't make sense. If, if the drone, the whole intent is to like protect the animals from safety, why should a commercial pilot or whatever, even if they have an SFOC, be able to fly it around the animal? Isn't there an equal risk, for example, of the animal hearing the noise? Like, I don't see how, for example, noise-wise, that would stop the animal from hearing a drone noise just because they have an SFOC. So that makes absolutely no sense. Like, overall, shouldn't it just be about intent if it's about safety? Like, I would imagine it should be the same thing across the board. It doesn't matter what it is, whether it's someone using some kind of object, a car. I mean, like a car. It's one thing to drive like by animals and all that. I mean, that's just, they're everywhere, okay? <laughs> like you can't avoid it. But if that guy with the car is purposely like running into the animals just for like the fun joy of it, like for some sick reason, like that is what you should be punishing. Like same thing with the drones, like wouldn't that make more sense? That's what it should be about. Like some dumb drone flyer purposely flying into the animals and all that. It should be about that. I mean, if you want to have like a blanket law, for example, that bans quote recreational flyers from doing this, everybody should be banned about it too if the real intent is about safety, which I do not think it is, just based on all the facts. The only difference I can see in terms of the, the letter in general, like for the most part it is a template response, but in one of them it says like, the new rules put in your opinion in the coming months versus the other one says coming summer. And I guess for the sake of a little bit of an education in terms of, I guess, response times when people send it to uh, MPs and all that, um, to my understanding, it says you sent the email on March 27th, you got the MP response on May 8th, and I know I made the video on June 7th, so you were still waiting for a while, you didn't get a response, and then on June 9th, you got this response. So I don't know if that's just um, the MPs, like uh, they're all, they have their different time schedules or maybe they were slow in getting back to you or if a bunch of other people got a response to you on this exact same day as an example. I mean, is it just me or the more that I read about Mark Garneau and Transport Canada about drone laws, it just sounds like they have absolutely no idea what they're doing for the most part. With what I said yesterday too in relation to all that, it's kind of like I said, it feels in many ways like this Garneau person or whatever, they're trying to treat things like a drone as if it is an actual airplane, like the way it flies and all that, which I don't think it's the same thing. And uh, actually, you actually mentioned a point like, if I ever get the chance to be in a plane, like maybe I should um, see what it's like, where their uh, peripheral vision is so little compared to, I guess, like, you know, a drone flyer or what they see. But at the same time, when you're in there, like you actually brought up the point, which I'd actually never thought about. Um, they probably can't hear like what's around them as well since they're inside whereas as a drone flyer I could hear 
Like I can hear there's birds here. I can probably hear there's a plane coming. Like I actually never thought of that. I mean, in general, again, too, if anyone knows how I can get experience like that, like for free or whatever, just to see what it's like, I mean, feel free to let me know. Because for me anyways, like again, I bought the drone more as a photography camera. So I'm just learning about all this stuff now just because of these uh, dumb laws. You're also suggesting that, um, that I should try FPV drone racing because it would greatly uh, sharpen my skill in terms of determining things like proximity, like where the aircraft is and all that. I actually got this for free when I got my S7. Yeah, I've always wondered if you could actually use this for the, the Mavic Pro, but I'm guessing it doesn't have like the software unless some people know like the softwares that you can get to run it with the, uh, the Mavic Pro and all that. But for drone racing and stuff like that, uh, what it made me think about is how like for me in comparisons to like planes and all that, when I flew the Mavic Pro, for me playing things like, you know, just like video games, I find it in many ways is very similar in terms of the flying, in terms of the reaction times, what I can see. Like maybe, I don't know like how many people here have background in like playing video games for example as a hobby, but I find it helps immensely. As well, there's times where you switch it into a third person mode, a first person mode, depending on the situation. I feel that's the same thing. Like when you're flying a drone, there's times where it's better to look at the drone, there's times it's better to look at the screen. I guess the only difference for me is when I'm flying like a drone, I know this is real life. There's no such thing as press start to continue. So that's why I'm extra cautious when it comes to safety, which is the ironic thing. Cause like I said, the laws basically stop people from that are flying it safe in many ways. I mean, is it really that hard or much to ask just to make a law that's really simple and straightforward that everyone can use in a responsible way? Example, field like this, good to fly, safe field like this for a helicopter what the hell are you doing down here <laughs> it should be like vice versa it should be that simple and straightforward i mean with the way the law is done and talking about video games and all that it makes me think just because it's tech phobia it would be like mark garnor playing this game for the first time where you're like a visual anti you can literally just with a smartphone you can pretty much like hack into anyone's personal life information and do it as you please like you can use it for the good or bad so because he's like say played a game like this now he's like oh man i better like put an interim order to ban all smartphones because that's what people could potentially do i mean technically yeah but isn't that a bit too far-fetched holy so I really hope like everyone like in the in general like the whole public just realizes how ridiculous this is with the law. I mean don't hold people back because a lot of people are doing good with the technology. <laughs> Anyways, see you guys later.